It's Friday, April 1st, and the FCAC tour has reached Ridgefield. And before we take a break for the weekend, we're going to run down some of the top stories across all of our HAN Network community news sites this week, the ones that grabbed the most reader attention and response, including that Reading Police charged a 14-year-old with possession of child pornography, obscenity, and harassment. According to police who could only release a few details about the case, the 14-year-old male was found to be in possession of a photograph, which led to the charges. He also disseminated the photograph secondarily, according to Police Chief Douglas Fuchs, explaining that that means he forwarded it to other people. Police noted the photograph was not taken on school grounds. The suspect was arrested and released to the custody of his parents. And Darien police broke up an underage drinking party hosted by a Darien High School hockey player on March 19th, just hours after the team had won its state championship game against Fairfield Prep. Darien High School senior Scott Voigt, who's 18, and his twin brother David, who's also on the team, allegedly told police they were hosting the party of more than 30 guests to celebrate that victory. Both brothers were named to the all FCAC second team last week for their play during the winter season. Police responded to a report of the underage drinking party at the Voigt's Allwood Road home at about 1130 at night. Officers arrived to see several teens in the driveway, but as they approached, the students scattered. And upon entering the home, the officers confronted a group of about 40 more students who then fled the home in different directions. At the scene, police found a ping pong table littered with beer cans and plastic cups alongside empty vodka bottles, beer cases and jello shots. Scott Voigt, the party's apparent host, allegedly became upset when he realized the police had entered the home and proceeded to question their authority. Police said Voigt asked if they had used the doorbell before entering and questioned whether or not they had proof of the party. A police spokesman later said that officers are allowed to enter homes where underage drinking is taking place as a safety precaution for all the youth involved. When asked to contact a parent, Scott Voigt allegedly refused and attempted to contact an unknown person and later his lawyer. According to a Points. Voigt was uncooperative throughout the incident, but his mother eventually did return to the home. And there's been some backlash to Weston School Administrator's response to a high school tradition. On Friday, March 18th, more than 150 seniors at Weston High did not attend school, part of a long-held tradition called Senior Skip Day. This year, though, unlike in years past, the administration at Weston High cracked down on seniors who skipped, even if the absence was excused by their parents. Seniors were met with some punishments. At first, the administration had heard rumors about Skip Day, according to the Weston Forum, and sent out several emails warning against it. According to a piece in the Weston Forum, the administration said that for whoever missed without a valid reason, even if their parents vouched for them, open campus privileges would be revoked for three weeks until April break. Now seniors who want to leave the building have to have a special card to show that they still have open campus privileges. But there's a lot more on that story at thewestonforum.com. And another story that's getting a lot of attention this week was that Stratford's Chapel Street Elementary School parents are upset and want to know why their children will not get to attend the nature classroom overnight trip as they have in years past. Some saying it's related to teachers being hesitant following another teacher's aid arrest for an alleged sexual relationship with a student. Dozens of Chapel Street parents and students attended Monday's Board of Ed meeting to voice their frustrations that they are not being given the full story as to why the three-day trip scheduled for the end of April is now a one-day visit. Several parents said they only found out about the change last week. There's a lot more on that story at StraffordStar.com. And finally, former New Canaan resident John P. Jeffrey, also known as Tucker Jeffrey, 48 years old, pleaded guilty this week to one count of wire fraud stemming from a scheme to defraud investors of more than $1.3 million. According to court documents and statements made in court, Jeffrey offered individuals the opportunity to invest in anchor shipping and trading and Southern Cross shipping, representing the victims that the companies were organized in the Marshall Islands, were engaged in the cargo shipping business, and had long term contracts that would support a profitable international shipping business. Uh, instead of using those invested funds as he had promised, Jeffrey used the vast majority of the money for his personal expenses, including paying for the mortgage on his new Canaan home, tuition at private schools, and more. He now faces a maximum term in prison of 20 years and a fine of up to $2.6 million. 
And one last story that grabbed a lot of attention. On Easter Sunday, Trumbull's O Bar and Grill in Trumbull Center closed its doors for good. O Bar Grill and owner Patrick Jean said the final week was exceptionally difficult with customers coming in to give him and his staff a final hug goodbye after they had been in the Trumbull community for seven years. But that does it for your look at some of the HAN Network top stories. You can follow the Spring FC Act Tour at HAN.network and on Twitter at HAN Network CT. We'll see you next time. Join the HAN Network and Make-A-Wish Connecticut to help make travel wishes come true for local kids with life-threatening medical conditions. Donate your unused airline miles to the HAN Network Wishes in Flight campaign. Over 70% of wishes granted involve travel, and your unused airline miles can help make kids' dreams become a reality. Plus, once you donate your miles to Make-A-Wish, they will never expire. Donate your unused miles and help the HAN Network share the power of a wish.